Yo, welcome back to the channel. Back in the shop today, working on the C10. We've been getting a lot of work done to this truck, a lot of big projects, and loose ends are starting to add up. So I made a list over here of stuff that needs addressed. Swapped over the factory uh, front grill. Let me know what you think. It had that billet grill on it, but I kind of like the classic original grill a little bit better. Anyway, here's our list. Just a bunch of loose ends. Just gonna start from the top, start knocking them out. Let's get to it. First thing on the list was detail the hood. And as you can see, there's one shiny spot right here in the front. Before I had this truck, I bought it from my dad. And when he first got it about three years ago, he detailed just this little section just to make sure it would buff out before he did the whole thing. And then the rest uh, never got done. And that's okay, we're gonna take care of it right now. I already clay barred this. Um, I did that last night. The clay bar just takes off all the contaminants on top so it's nice and smooth now i'm not detailing the whole truck the hood is just really bad the rest is not that bad there is some scratches but we don't have time for that we got a whole list to take care of so we can't exactly do a traditional compound and polish job here because there's no clear coat on this paint it's just spray bombed black what we're going to use is a cutting polish it's like a hybrid one step with a uh, medium cutting pad we're actually going to be removing a little bit of paint to get it shiny again. So this will end up turning black. I got the edges taped off. That way, if I would have polished onto the fender a little bit and there'd be a little shiny spot right here, then I have to do the whole thing. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna do the hood. I know it's not perfect, but it's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. But the paint wasn't very good to begin with. I mean, we did the best we could. It's not, it doesn't look that bad. Got a quick coat of wax drying on there right now. And we'll see how it looks. Buff this wax off real quick. See, it's a little bit better, kind of shiny. Is it better than the old one? Marginally, yeah, not bad. Check that off the list. The next thing on the list was a pinstripe. We're gonna do a little red pinstripe right on top of the silver, between the silver and the black, I'm using this quarter inch, I think. I wanna do that to match the uh, red hubcaps that I did. These hubcaps are normally yellow. Me and Courtney painted them. So now I'm gonna do a pinstripe to match. Should look pretty good. Pinstripe looking good. It got a little dicey right here under the mirror, but just had to trim it a little bit. So that's good. Pinstripe is done now. We're gonna head inside the truck and get some of these interior things done. Cause I kind of rushed through some of the things on the interior in the last video. Just trying to hurry. First thing we need to do is get this dome light working. Cause that's been really annoying at nighttime. There's our wires. How the heck? There's like no slack. All right, I grabbed me a test light. Both front doors are open, so one of these should have power right now. All right, I'm getting it figured out. Nothing's lighting up. If I come over here to the light switch, turn on the dome light, it comes on and off. Also, if I open the door, it comes on, turns off. All right, I got these wires ran. Pop the bulb in. Let's give it a little test. Dome light switch and door. All right, dome light is done. Dash light also done. Let me show you. That's that light under here. Um, just needed a bulb, easy enough. This is what came out. Um, I don't even know what this is, but I put an old 1156 in there and we got dome light, we got floor light, interiors lit up and they work properly. All right, next we gotta get this horn working. Like I said, this is one of the things I kind of rushed through on the install. So let's get that figured out. Pretty much starting from scratch here. All right, I'll read the instructions. Okay, those instructions suck. You're supposed to be able to stick a sleeve down there and lock it in place, but I cut it flush. That's all right, I think I got a fix here. All right, now we're talking. Got the wheel. Stop. Is that the torque spec? Yep, it's gonna honk until I get this pad on with the spring. So brace yourselves. Beep, 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 go. <sighs> Horn's done and a honking. 
Right here I got the uh, mount the radio question mark. I'll answer that question right now. Nope. Let me show you. It's kind of just set in here um, and they give you a little strap. So if you want to, you can mount it um, securely from the back. See how it's kind of loose? I wasn't really seeing a good spot to do that up in here. There's the back of the radio and there's not really a brace or anything. Maybe someday if I hit a bump and the radio goes flying, then I might look into doing something about that. But for now, I'm really not that worried about it. Then here we got temp and oil gauges. Let's take a walk. For the temp gauge, I'm actually not worried about it. I think it's actually starting to fix itself a little bit. The more I drive the truck, the more accurate it seems like it is. Besides, the sensor looks to be pretty new, uh, but the oil gauge is gonna be a different story. Here's my theory. I think from the factory, this truck came with an, uh, an idiot light, which instead of having a needle that shows you your exact pressure, it'll just be a light and the light will come on if your pressure is too low. Um, I'm suspecting this because I found the pressure switch. It's back here. And then if you have an oil pressure gauge, you should also have a sending unit, which I don't see one under here at all. We have the switch right there, but I don't see an, an empty plug or anything for a sending unit. So I think I'm just going to order a sending unit a switch, a gauge. I'm gonna order the new circuit board thing for the gauges. That way I know they're all working pretty good. And I'm just gonna go from there. I can't really do anything about it today. And if I'm gonna be tearing apart the dashboard anyway, I think I'm just gonna get new gauges because I half don't trust these. I don't trust any of them. Like it's not 10 o'clock right now. So we're just gonna cross that off right now. The last thing on the list was changing out this front plate. All right, the stupid little plastic thing broke. So we'll just do it the hard way with a nut and bolt. Anyway, like I was saying, this is not a normal, ordinary plate to me. Um, I actually have a bit of a story to go along with it. Growing up, my dad always had old Chevy trucks and he always had this plate or a plate exactly like this on all of them. Even when he was a teenager and up, every single Chevy he's had has had a plate, the same one. He might still have his somewhere, I'm not sure. I was just trying to keep that going, stick this on this truck out for a cruise here. I don't know how well you can see the gauges, but that temp gauge used to peg, but now it's like slightly below the red line and we're up to temp right now. So that's operating temperature. I feel like it's just off. I don't think it's actually that hot. It's a nice little evening for a cruise here. Just get out and enjoy the truck a little bit. That's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.